stand for pledge allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Board minutes. So moved. Okay. Motion. I got a second. Any more discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Any additions or None there. Motion and a second. Second. And a motion and a second. Any more discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Oh. We don't have our speakers on, folks. Hello. My fault. Testing. My bad. Testing. No. My bad. All right. <coughs> Luther, Luther and social services. You can go to the stand or you can go sit down, whatever you like. The podium, I should say. Good morning. State your name for the record, too, please. Hello, my name is Jessica Quisted. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Jessica. Um, from Luther and Social Service Hope Housing. Um, Lutheran Social Service is a homeless prevention agency um, seeking renewal funding through the Family Homeless Prevention and Assistance Program. Uh, the application requires uh, a supporting resolution from the county board of each county in the service area. Um, Lutheran Social Service has experience administering FHPAP services to Crow Wing, Todd, and Morrison counties since 1999. It is the only homeless prevention program in the service area and has been a successful program through the years. Um, every three years, Wilder does a, a study, like a one night study to count the homeless people. Um, and the last study was done October 25th of 2018, so last October. And um, the study has shown that there's actually a 10% increase in homelessness in the state of Minnesota. And uh, so the program works with households who are homeless or facing homelessness. And ideally, the program tries to reach households prior to an eviction or for foreclosure, thus preventing the homelessness. Um, services are targeted toward low-income households that have no other options or resources available. And then um, there's a graph that has a breakdown of the counties that we serve. And a graph shows, so our, our uh, funding is from 2017, July 1st, 2017 to June 30th of 2019. So we're just coming to the end of our biennium. And this is like a breakdown of the percentage of what we've served. So we've served 19% of our households have been in Morrison County. Um, and just so, like for your awareness, um, when people do call us from Morrison County, we definitely take into consideration that there may not be other resources available like there might be in Crow Wing. So, yeah, and we have, uh, our goal was to serve 302 households in that two year period, which we're on target to do. And then the next couple pages, I mean, you can kind of just look over them if you'd like, but they're just a breakdown of the different categories that we help. Um, rapid rehousing is if somebody's like homeless staying in their car, we might be able to help them with a few months of rental assistance to get them into a place so that they can get stable and then look for a job so that they can maintain their housing. And then um, our homeless assistance is maybe somebody that's couch hopping and just needs some rental assistance to get on their feet. And then the at-risk assistance is people that are currently in a rental or a house. So, yeah, you guys have any questions? Gentlemen, any questions? Commissioner Zelensky. Mr. Chair, Jessica, I actually do. I think I have a little bit of a grasp on homeless, as I think that most all of us do, and I believe that this board has uh, been addressed dealing with homeless in the past. Today we're dealing on an application. And I think I know the answer, but I want to be very clear. The application is really a pass-through, um, if you will, when it comes to funding with the county agreeing to this, if you will, the county is not agreeing to fund right. anything. Right. The county is agreeing to work with Lutheran Social Services in this case. Mm -hmm. But as far as actual taxpayer money coming out of, the, out of a pot mm -hmm. with this project, and it's not a new project, and I'm very clear on that, there, there is no actual money that exchanges hands. Mm -mm. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Commissioner Wilson. When you talk about homeless, like looking for a place to live, are you talking about a gent let's say there's a gentleman that lives in his car. Did you have to be a family no. to be able to help? And, and do they have to have a job? Not necessarily, um, because there's this thing called the priority list. So if we run into somebody that's homeless and doesn't have a job, we'll complete a, a vulnerability survey with them to see where they fall, and then we'll put them onto this list. And that list um, is for different programs that help um, homeless people, and usually they don't have income, and we can put them into a program, get them housed before they even have income. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else, gentlemen? All right, then uh, you guys see the resolution authorizing the application for Minnesota Housing and Finance Agency Family Homeless Prevention Assistant Program. Mr. Chair, I'll move on this. All right, I got a motion, I need a second. second. Any more discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank Have you, a good Jessica. Day. You too. And we've got someone else in the audience. Looks like Teresa and Brad will be up. Oh, and Fran, <laughs> sorry. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Good morning, Good morning Brad. 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 I have both a social service and public health report around our front desk activities, so I thought I'd bring them both up here in case there might be questions across uh, either agency. But Teresa's gonna start with her report first. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Good Teresa. Morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here again. And again, you have to please state your names for the record. Oh, Teresa Stout. So um, last year when I was here, we had um, six full-time office support staff. We are now down to five due to a restructure. Um, so my focus this year is on our five office support staff and their activities in serving the residents of Morrison County. Um, the first thing that we are going to look at that the graph shows is the number of pages scanned into our electronic document management system. So it is down a little bit this year, which I expected. Um, the previous year was really the push to get all of the closed cases so that we could begin the remodel process. So, um, so we are down a little bit, but we are um, ahead of 2017, which just affirms the growth in the social service area. Uh, the next slide will show the number of pages scanned per day by staff. Again, we're down a little bit, um, which is good. I mean, it, it shows the, that the trend is continuing as in my head now that we're done with that big push of scanning that this is where it should be. The interesting point to me was um, I did something a little different this year. I wanted to find out how many pages per day office support staff work. And by that I mean when someone comes into our front desk and they drop off some verifications, we scan those in. But then another staff person has to look at those, make sure they go into the correct case file with the correct name, the date, and so on. Um, Staff have been reporting that they have been busier with this piece of the work that they do. And when I did the stats on it, they view and work 937 pages a day. So that takes up one person's time every day to workflow those documents, which then go on to the workers and they arrive in their inbox and they look at them and do what they need to do with them. Um, the next slide will show my little trivia. I always want to bring something fun to you guys. So um, this year it's the state capitol. Um, so last year the office support team imaged and shredded over 569,000 sheets of paper, which equates to 190 feet. And the Minnesota state capitol is 220 feet tall. So. Next time you're down at the Capitol and you look at that, <laughs> you will remember how many pages Morrison County has, we don't have to store anymore. It's in our EDMS system. Nice. Um, and the Minnesota State Capitol was built in 1905, so it's been here 114 years. That's a statistic that is absolutely unbelievable. I know, I know. So I now mean, at trivia. A piece of paper, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, 
Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, the next spotlight is dealing with our front desk activities. Our average number of clients visiting our front desk is remaining stable. Um, we average 61 clients a day coming into our agency for one, um, one need or another, and then 28% of those go back to see a worker. Phone calls to the front desk have dropped so again, a little. Tracy, I, I'm sorry. Can you explain? Okay, you said uh, where am I? 61 mm -hmm. come in per day. Of those, 17 go back and talk to. What are the other people there for? Just to Just, ask directions or what? Um, to drop things off. They may be picking up app applications for services. They may be dropping off verifications to get their application processed. Um, of those 17 that go back, they may be here to see our intake social sure, yep. worker. They may be here to um, see a financial worker to fill out the application and do the interview process. It's a lot of people per day. Mr. Chair. Chair. Yep. Well, Commissioner well, Lumaire. Sorry. Well, from 15 to 17, why was there such a big increase? Do, was there a reason? Did we change something or? Um, I believe to it 65? has to do with Minsure. I think Minsure oh, no. started about that time, mm -hmm. and instead of the clients being directed to the state, okay. now everything is run through the county. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yep. You bet. Mr. Chair, Teresa, just for the sake of argument, when we when we talk about a number of 61, I'm anticipating I know the answer, but I'm gonna have to ask it anyway. If I come to see Brad, am I counted in that 61? Yes. Okay. Yes. Everyone that walks through the door, so to speak, is counted in. That's your contacts. That's our contacts. Okay. Yes. And the other question that I had was, when we talk about office support, and that's about the first three words that you used when you, when you started. We're talking about, and I hope I'm not offending anyone, secretaries, call takers, mm -hmm. office staff. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. And no, you aren't offended. We aren't offended at all. We are very proud of what we do. Thank you. Um, we are actually the hub of the agency. You're right. So, um, and then the phone calls have remained this remained about the same. A little bit down, I, I like to think that people are using the direct dial lines to connect to the staff, which we encourage them to do. Um, the next slide, the two new services that we have added, um, we installed a drop box next to the U.S. Postal Box, so clients no longer have to come into our agency if they wish to drop something off. We did a tally of that. We are retrieving an average of two envelopes per workday, although yesterday there were nine. So it is getting used more and more. So we thank you for your support of that. That is a great convenience to, especially people with little kids, they can just pull up, drop their documents in there and go on their way. And I think it'll be even more important as we move Teresa's staff into the administration area and the lobby is big, but in terms of being able to help folks there, it will be more challenging, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and so giving the clients an opportunity to drop information in the box versus having to come in, well, I think over time as that transition happens, it'll mm -hmm. continue to increase. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And the last piece that we have branched out <coughs> is we are now completing fingerprints for the BCA. For any staff who work in a care facility, our daycare licensors. Um, so we started that January 1st of 2018. In, from January 1st to December 31st, we completed 430 fingerprints, which is an average of two per day. Mr. Chair? Commissioner Zanski. Teresa, why does that fall under you, or why does that fall under us? Simply because of those folks in, in those care homes, care facilities <coughs> are in Morrison County? And is, is there rules that say that's what will be done in Morrison County will be the police, if you will, to make sure it's done? Um, Morrison County opted to be a place for this service. Okay. Um, it is a, it's to support the residents of Morrison County. Perfect. Um, it's in the office support area because we have staff available Perfect. all day long. 
Thank you. And, and just as an, uh, another comment, Commissioner, and that is that uh, some may recall that the jail used to do fingerprinting yep. for foster parents, adult children's child care. And about a year and a half ago or two years ago, the Department of Human Services moved to net study. Mm -hmm. So the jail was no longer required to do it. County, counties could opt or not opt to do net studies, and we, do, we opted to do net studies. Sourcewell provided a small partnership grant that helped us purchase the equipment. Um, and, I, and, I, and when I talked to the commissioners about supporting this, it really was because we need providers in our community and soon child care providers will also have to do this process. So um, it was quite cumbersome for individuals interested in foster care to go to UPS in Brainerd or St. Cloud. Um, Horizon Health and Peers used to have one. They closed it, they, they did not keep it open very long just because they couldn't manage the traffic and having to just do their own staff. And so we felt this was a service that we needed to do to make sure we had providers who could provide adult and children's foster care. And Brad, forgive me, it was a year ago or two years ago that we had this discussion. And I, yep. Nope, that's okay. You jogged yep. my memory. Thank yep. you. And Mr. Chair, if I could just add, too, I appreciate Social Services Front Desk taking that on. We tried to do that in administration um, and, and our capable of doing it, but the amount of traffic that we had into the organization conflicting with the small little area that we had and stuff, it was it was tough. So the fact that, that you took that on was tremendous um, and clearly a value add to the community because it's been used tremendously. And if we didn't have it here, that'd be a lot of travel time for a lot of residents in Morrison County. So appreciate it. And I'm I not sure if that's that. still the case, but I know when some people come in for foster care licensing, there's questions. And so our front desk staff may have to reach out to Julia or Gail mm -hmm. because of a quirk in the system or information that might be needed. So it made more <coughs> sense for us to move it to our office anyway. So it was a good, it's a good connection for those residents. So I appreciate that. <coughs> and if I could add to Mr. Chair, um, the, the, you talked about going from six staff to five, but if I recall even, you know, rewinding farther than that, you had more, um, at one point in time, didn't you have seven staff? Yep. Um, seven. Mm -hmm. So it's an example, um, Mr. Chair and the board about technology and how it can impact staffing levels and the work that we're doing to be innovative um, and the work that we're doing to try to um, help processes to really avoid those costs. Labor is high cost and we all know that. So continuing to employ people year after year after year, and if we can reduce that by one, if we can reduce that by two, that's huge. And so. Um, I, I commend the the Teresa and Brad and the work that everybody's done in terms of trying to trying to manage that. That's a big deal to budgets, and and they ought to be credited for that. So thank you. And Teresa then else for all the, the credit. <laughs> well, I know Brad. Totally I just was trying credit. to be nice. Anything else for social <laughs> services? Otherwise, Brad, you can change your hat, and we've I got public health with Fran. Thank you, Teresa. Thank Teresa, you. thank you very you. much. You can stay there until they're done if you like. Okay. Okay, Fran Dosh. And today I'm going to, hi, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the staffing and the focus of the public health front desk. We have three full-time staff at our desk. They focus on providing customer service to clients and to county residents who stop in. Uh, they also provide many direct services for WIC and the various environmental health licensing programs that we have. They also uh, help people coming in for case management or maternal child health clients are also served. Um, they provide administrative support for various programs. They cover the maternal child health and the nurse family partnership program, the child and teen checkup outreach program, the infant follow along program, emergency preparedness for the health alert network, where we pass on uh, emails <laughs> that are received from the Minnesota Department of Health to the various clinics, hospitals, uh, basically wherever they ask us to pass them on to. So our one of our front desk person handles those. And also uh, Jerry does the car seat program and various other grants that we have. Um, as the facility remodel progresses, we're giving fewer directions than we did when the middle building was closed, but we still get some residents trying to find uh, where to go and stuff. And with the veteran service office located in our department now, we do help them occasionally with reception with their clients and such too. Uh, the phone calls that come to the public health front desk over a four month time span from February 4th through May 3rd this year, 
we received approximately 21 phone calls per day. On average, 55% uh, of those were for WIC, so the biggest portion of our work is WIC and WIC clients. We had 14% that were miscellaneous topics, which I'll explain in a few minutes. We had 12% calls for case management, 11% of calls for environmental health services, and 6% calls transferred to social services or other departments, and like 1% for maternal child health or 1% for people needing other departments or resources. As far as the miscellaneous phone calls, which is a large portion, of our calls, uh, a lot of people call in wanting numbers for like, they think they're calling the Morrison County Records sometimes or Minnesota, mid-Minnesota drug testing. I don't know if our <coughs> numbers are similar, but I, those are some of the calls the front desk gets. A lot of times they're looking for HUD or soil and water or um, hands of hope. Sometimes they just want help finding a phone number and the staff will you know, look it up or find it for them and give it to them. Uh, or give them correct numbers and they can call. And they also, uh, sometimes they'll call and they'll need help finding something on our website. And staff will navigate the website and kind of tell them how to get to what they need to find. So as far as clients visiting our front desk, um, they're coming to receive services or they're community residents looking to find services in the area or in our department or get directions or looking for other community resources. The average number of clients visiting the public health desk per day from that time period is 11 walk-ins and then there were five that had appointments. So about 16 people per day coming into our department. Um, a lot of our help is for WIC. We get about six walk-ins and five that have appointments or are coming to see a WIC staff person. Um, environmental health has a little over one per day. And a lot of times, you know, they, um, they just get helped at the front desk. They don't necessarily need to see one of the sanitarians, but they're dropping off an application or bringing in a payment or, you know, just have a question and or asking for an application. So. Um, it, that um, front desk does get busier in November and December when we have our annual food, beverage, and lodging licensing going on. We have, you know, 200 or so establishments and they're bringing in, most of them are bringing in their payments or we're receiving them and have to receive them in from the mail. So that time period is a lot busier. Summer is busier with environmental health with people bringing in special event applications for special event food and special event camping. So um, after that, uh, the maternal child health gets about one per day and stuff. And a lot of times they see a worker and sometimes they don't. Uh, most other programs are about one per day too for case management or um, looking for veterans or, you know, looking, thinking they're getting help, they need social services and they come to our department instead. So. Um, we do have a higher average that come in for miscellaneous reasons, and that could be just looking for directions to like, where's mid-Minnesota drug testing? I don't know why that comes up a lot, but it does. <coughs> um, or they want to know how to get to Hands of Hope or soil and water, and because it's not located in our building. So um, we've had more staff and other residents coming in this last year because of the meeting rooms being closed. So our meeting rooms have been used much more. So we've had extra people coming in that way and we do count those people as well in our numbers. So um, we have had several come. Uh, the next thing I would like to highlight is the work that's provided at the front desk in addition to greeting the clients and the residents. They work in their own specific uh, grant programs. Jessica spends 43% of her time in a week in the child and teen checkup program. She is the support person for the outreach coordinator. She mails out numerous letters to the children that are need services or it's time for them to have their checkups. Uh, she provides about 27% of administrative or customer service time. She spends, she's the backup in the WIC program, so she spends 17% of her time helping WIC when Jerry's <clears throat> at lunch or if there's a double WIC day, then she's also helping check-in clients. She works in the Nurse Family Partnership Program, which takes about 12% of her time. 
and just a, under 1% of her time is spent in the Health Alert Network program for the public health emergency preparedness. And that fluctuates depending upon how many health alerts we're receiving from MDH. If there's a crisis going on, um, then we're getting more emails and alerts. If not, then it's pretty quiet. So that really fluctuates. Jerry at the front desk, she's the second person that a client see when they come into our department. Her hours are budgeted 71% in the WIC program, so that's the very majority of her work. She also has time, 29% uh, of her time in the infant follow-along program, and also that includes time spent with the car seat grant. Um, she also spends time uh, doing administrative because she is the second person that the, a person will see when they come in, so she does have some administrative time one to two hours a week, but she's not budgeted for that time. So, uh, Mary at the front desk on the next slide. Her time is divided between environmental health and she also works with the maternal child health program. So she spends 55% of her time on environmental health licensing, which is food, beverage, and lodging, the special events, the vending, the radon. And then she does maternal maternal health work, supporting the MCH nurses for that. 30% of her time is spent with that, with referrals. <coughs> she works in alcohol and tobacco licensing. That's 12% of her time. And then her administrative for customer service is only about 3%, because the other two pretty much are at the front and greeting clients as they come in. Um, overall, uh, if someone coming in for WIC it could take anywhere from five to 10 minutes of Jerry's time. Environmental health, if they come in and they need to see Mary and speak with her, it could be anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, depending upon if it's an annual license or a special event or, or just having questions or getting information for them. Um, for Jerry, for the follow along grant, she does data entry of the ASQs when they're brought in or received and she has state reports and she attends regional meetings for that program. For the car seats for Jerry, um, she has annual trainings that she needs to attend because she has to get CEUs in order to continue her certification to be able to do the car seat program. She's our backup. We do have Melissa, but Jerry is the backup for that program. Uh, the child and teen checkup program also requires attendance at some regional meetings quarterly per year. And then the NFP grant, um, we actually do provide some clerical services to the other CHB counties that are in that grant. Um, it has decreased, but there are still some services that are being provided to those. So. Gentlemen, any questions, comments? I How about you, a, Brad? You got, I, oh, I have a couple comments well, if I may. got one Mr. minute. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, as we have managed this remodel, I really need to thank Fran and Teresa. Um, for their working together in terms of managing what both up and upstairs and downstairs are going to look like. They've worked together on what that front office area is going to look like. It is going to be new for all of us, both public health and social services. And I just really applaud Teresa and Fran's ability to work together as they plan for what's going to happen as we start to transition to this uh, uh, combined area. And then I also just have to really thank Teresa this week, uh, last week, last month. Um, Social Services is planning to move downstairs over the next uh, three weeks, and it would not be going as well if it wasn't for Teresa. Pretty soon Fran will be in this position, and I will have to say the same thing to her, but um, Teresa over the last month, her patience, her perseverance has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> So and I really like, applaud both of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask Deb, when is this all supposed to be completed for social services and public health to be downstairs? <laughs> By the end of this year? To be downstairs? Or just in the next few weeks, but no, split. But, so everything's done. The next phase will be started um, after everybody's vacated that, that upper level, which will happen in the next few weeks. And so that's taking anywhere from six to nine months is what I'm saying. So next spring-ish. Putting my money on March 1st. <laughs> okay. okay. So well, you're putting how much money? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or next, you know, winter, spring, uh, yeah, early, early um, spring, I'm late winter. I'm just trying to put you on the stop spot. Yeah. Well, well, that's fine. 
I don't really know the answer, so I'll make up whatever I need to. But um, about that time, Mr. Well, Chair. Well, I would say that because of Teresa's organizational ability, that they've been able to do things within our current upstairs, which will help decrease the amount of time that they have to work yes. upstairs mm -hmm. as well as disturb the basement. So yeah. thanks to Teresa for moving people around con constantly over the last nine months um, during this phase two and working in the basement because yeah. they have built the data rooms, they move, they put in sewer pipes, they've there's yeah. actually a large, I don't know if you've been over there, but there's a large chunk of the area right in the middle that's that was under construction where people aren't sitting. And so it's been prepping for that next yeah. phase. And it in, in the end, it will be just fantastic to be able to have staff in one place where, you know, Fran, you touched a little bit on it, where you're directing staff across the complex to get services. And now we're all together and we're able to be one face for, for customers. And I think that's what they ought to expect and deserve. So I appreciate the fact that that's going to be yeah. the case that and that nice. you two will be very um, cohesive in that delivery and and, and making sure that folks have what they need, and staff really are able to help with a with a tremendous amount more than what they're able to assist with now, which is huge. So hopefully next year when they present at this time, we will be on the same side of the complex. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for that information. Right. Anything else, Thank Brad, on the bubble? Thank you, ladies. And if I Thank could just you. touch base quick as a reminder, social services, Teresa's area is moving into that that what we've now vacated in administration. And so that way with all of those clients who saw the, the number that they serve on a daily basis aren't having to traipse all the way downstairs. And so we're working hard. They're being very accommodating. It's a small space. We know that. <laughs> we've, we've been in that. But they're able to accommodate that. And I think that'll be huge in terms of that transition for, for customers. So the, the so biggest challenge will be how do we manage the people who need to see... Uh, social workers yeah. or financial workers or do applications <coughs> given our limited space. So um, we may hear uh, a few frustrations from individuals for the next few months knowing that what we will move into will be much better yeah. and more accommodating. So we're trying to, we met yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, toured the space trying to figure out a flow for clients um, and where we can interview uh, and where we can do some work with them. So mm -hmm. it'll be challenging, but um, it'll be all right. Commissioner it'll be all right. So, so Deb, the uh, so social services will will take over the administration area where where Miss Tabitha has been kind of the point person to the general public when they come in. She's kind of the information desk um, in the past, as I've always kind of viewed that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so now, when the public enters the courthouse. Social services will will direct those people whether they're there to to seek help from social services or public health. Yes. But if they're even if they're looking for their driver's license or they got to go to the sheriff's office or whatever, so they're taking on some of that information responsibility. Yep, they are. And we met with them. We kind of talked a little bit about the common questions. All the phone calls still, that initial point is, is with the admin, and that's easy to transfer. Um, the ultimate plan at this point in time doesn't have staff in that information booth area. That's not my favorite part of all of this, but you have goods and bads and you kind of you, you weigh that. Um, we've done a lot of work on trying to come up with signage that's going to help and also access to admin with, with, if you have a question, call, and we have a phone there that they're able to access straight to admin. We're going to have to play that by ear to see how it goes, keeping in mind that the remodel in general is better in terms of customer service. So they have one spot that they're going through right off the lobby for the bulk of, of public health, social services, veterans. So all of those services are in one location. They're not chasing across the complex. All of the land offices are on one floor, so they're not chasing across the complex for that. And so the setup is much better to be able to find folks, but change is hard. And so getting used to where you need to go for things is going to be a challenge. So we, we've got our work cut out for us to make sure that that's done as best as we can. Mm -hmm. So, so the end goal would be to to not have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, to not have an information desk, a person who, so 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 when the public comes in, they walk in the door and they look and they see all the signs and everything, and they're like, okay, where do I go? Y you know, 
we that's that's the goal that we would not have someone basically manning a, uh, an information desk is that correct that's possibly what's going to happen yes because otherwise it would be a staff person at a high expense to be there and yeah. so that's what we're trying to to accomplish um, and we will we will play it by ear because that that space isn't uh, isn't designed for anything particular right now knowing that if it becomes a problem we need to adapt and we need to adjust and we need to figure out how to best serve people and so um, we're hoping that we can get by without staffing because staffing is expensive so and, and and finally mr. chair if I may then the then having Teresa and her staff in that what is now <coughs> excuse me again um, the administration area is not a long term. Um, is not long term. That is a that is a temporary yep. till phase three is yep. completed. Until they're across the hall when public health and veterans and social services will all be in one lobby, um, right across the hall, and accessed through there. And keep in mind also the sheriff's office when all of this is done right. in mm -hmm. the end of 2020 is going to be where motor vehicle is, so right up close yep. to the front also. So the accessibility of all of our areas is going to be better. Well, mm -hmm. DMV won't be there either. They will be on the west side, and that's one where we have to, the west side of the complex, mm -hmm. so that's one where we'll have to direct folks. But again, there, there we've, we've been thinking through how we can help that process. Mm -hmm. But any time you move people, we all know it's confusing to get used to it, but we'll get there. Yep, very good. Very any good. else, gentlemen? Thank you, sir. All right, anything Thank else, Brad? Brad? All right. Thank you. I have a couple, Thank with you public very health. Kindly. I have a couple other public health uh, items. The first is approval of intoxicating liquor licenses and non-intoxicating liquor renewals and a temporary on-sale intoxicating liquor license. Gentlemen, I'll ask for a motion for both. So I have a motion. Okay. I need a second. I got a second. Any more discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And then I need approval of the county board for the county attorney, Chelsea Robinson, and myself to sign a contract for uh, Jesse Neiman and I have to remember the name of her company, um, Lakes Count Country Associates. Because of our uh, grant for increased nurse family partnership um, services, we are increasing the mental health consultation needs. Um, Currently, Jessica is paid for for the other areas with uh, by Todd County and Cass County. Now, Morrison County will have a cost. It will come out of the grant that we receive for increased nurse family partnership. So we need approval to enter into this contract with uh, Jessica ne Neiman, Nimi, and Lakes Country Associates. Gentlemen, I'll ask for a motion and a second. So, so moved. moved. Uh, I'll give Word. a second. It. All right, we give that one to Jeff. Any more discussion? Mr. Chair? Commissioner Jelinski. Once again, Brad, this is really nothing more, and I want to be very careful on how I say that, I'm not belittling any of it, is a pass-through. Correct. We received a grant yep. to cover these services. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. All right. Any more discussion, comments, questions? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. That is all I have today. All right. Thank Brad. you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Have a great have a day. day. Let's see here. Where are we going? Are we moving right along. Moving along. I see Amy's out there. Land services. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Amy. And I know we forget, but we always got to state our name for the record, who you are. I know who you are. Oh, you want me to state my name? Please, yep. Oh, okay. Amy Kowalczyk, Morrison County Land Services Director. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. <laughs> All right. I have a stack of things for you today. Um, the first uh, few are to revisit the recommendations of the Planning Commission for the five items that we heard. The first one is to consider the interim use permit request for Deanne Adams. Uh, this was to continue a home extended business, specifically for animal chiropractic care, including one condition. This was recommended for approval by the Planning Commission, and the condition was that the interim use permit shall terminate when Deanne Adams no longer owns the subject property. Gentlemen, I'll ask for a motion and a second with the conditions added. Mr. Chair, I'll move that. All right, I got a second. Motion. I got a second. Any more discussion? <coughs> Not those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you. And the second one is to consider the conditional use permit request for 
Kurt Stuckmeyer. This is to establish a mini storage facility. Uh, this was recommended for approval by the Planning Commission with two conditions. Those conditions are no outdoor storage of customers' items shall occur at any time, and the mini storage business shall be limited to the two existing sheds located on the western portion of the property. General, I'll ask for I'll, the, I'll move on that, Mr. Uh, Chair. I got a motion. I need a second. What's the conditions? A second. I got a second. Any more discussion? Not those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> Next item is to consider the interim use permit uh, request for from uh, Freeman Gingrich. This is to establish a limited rural business, specifically for construction and sale of mini cabins, barns, and sheds. This was also recommended for approval by the Planning Commission with four conditions. Those conditions are no more than four structures shall be on site and for sale at one time. Structures for sale shall not be located within road right-of-way. The interim use permit shall become null and void when Freeman Gingrich no longer owns the property. And the trailer home and stages of teardown shall be completely removed from the property and properly disposed of by June 30th, 2019. General, I'll ask for a motion and a second. What's the conditions on the proposed permit? I so need a, moved I for discussion. I need, any more discussion? Mr. Mr. Chair. Zelensky. Amy, I was at that public hearing, mm -hmm. and I know that there was I probably shouldn't use the word a lot. They should use the word some. Mm -hmm. Discussion on garbage. Yes. Debris. Not just the broken down trailer house. The debris being trash in the area, being blown around and being blown throughout the neighborhood. There is no condition that says anything about this, and I think it might have been talked about it possibly, mm -hmm. putting a condition on to clean it up. Do we do any policing? If you will, um, I thought it was very clear at the Planning Commission hearing meeting uh, when we talked about the debris that was there, uh, the, a road approach that is virtually going through a ditch mm -hmm. and no approach, you know, get the approach built. I understood that very clearly. I understood he lived in that little house and that he should have some form of septic if he's actually living there. I, I got that, yes. and understand how that part of it all works. However, I'm 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 personally concerned about the debris, mm -hmm. and and not just the broken down trailer house, which he really couldn't. I didn't I didn't think that he explained it very clear to me that that's his problem. It's his property, although we don't have a junk ordinance, if you will, because we all know that someone's treasure is an, or someone's junk is another person's treasure. But debris is totally different than treasure, I think. Do we have any way of ensuring the public that that debris is in fact going to be cleaned up while he is there? My understanding is that most of the debris right now is from the contents of that trailer okay. and from the teardown of okay. it. Um, the you know, we do have a solid waste ordinance as well. So if yeah. there's a if there's a buildup of solid waste, that certainly can um, can be addressed through the solid waste ordinance. Um, the other thing is, you could certainly condition it that he have regular garbage service, because I know in the hearing he did identify that he would self haul that to the landfill. So if the board's more comfortable with requiring that he have on site garbage service, that would certainly be something you could think about. Um, adding as a condition um, to ensure that that is that that is taken care of. I don't know that that would necessarily take care of the problem. You can still have your, if, if you're not a orderly person, you're still going to have debris mm -hmm. that's going to perhaps be <coughs> flying around in the. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That was just a concern that. If I, I may, heard. Commissioner Jensky, would you want in the. Number four, put debris in there because you just have tear down, and then he has till June 30th. Would that be something that you'd be looking at? If you'd put so the word debris. Could, could we rewrite that to Absolutely. include de debris, paper, uh, insulation, whatever that might be, Correct. Uh, be yep. removed and stay, um, stay removed? That, that's not a proper. I don't, I don't think, think. Uh, Commissioner, that would be a tough one to enforce because again. You know, people like you said, one man's junk is another man's treasure. Debris, f debris, loose debris, and a broken down trailer house are two different things. Right, but I'm just saying to continue doing that. So, you know, if you, I don't know, because there is already a time in here of June 30th, right? 
Right, the deadline for the for yeah, the yeah. Up. Thank so you. you. Thank could, you. You're correct. You could certainly add a fifth condition regarding ongoing debris management if if that is it's a better Commissioner fit for what you're call. doing yet. I, based upon the public's input, I don't think that, that that's wrong to do okay. that. So do you want to add a fifth condition? Then? Sure. What would it, what how would it read? <laughs> Let's say um, property, let me think. So we, we want to address debris. That would Well, that, that, was the, that was the public's yep. concern I, yep. that I heard anyway. And I guess the, the interpretation of what that would mean, so I'm just trying right, to right, help you, Amy, um, yeah. draft that in terms of remain, you know, in the property to remain debris free or a reasonable managed debris level, um, that's going to be interpreted open, differently. And, I without think. a doubt. And so I'm struggling a bit with how to address that. If I, um, if I may, Mr. Chair, I, I, my, Mr. My, you know, I've sat in on that, on that uh, planning and zoning meeting too, and I think I know where you're coming from, my friend, and, and I think, I think uh, you could probably, you know, clean this up a little bit just by saying in, in, in number four in saying uh, the trailer home in, in stages of teardown shall be completely removed, including all blown debris. Which and, is, which and, is, and have the end date June 30th. I would be happy with that. And, 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 okay. and the end date is there yeah. listed as June yeah. 30th. But, it, but it, meaning, because I think the, uh, the, the photos that were that were released um, on the screen and on and uh, by the public there, um, and the and kind of the general consensus there from from the public that was there was that most of this debris, as as my good man uh, states, is is actually insulation mm -hmm. and and uh, house wrap and that kind of crap that blew off of this this uh, trailer during the during the uh, during the winter and mr. chair if, uh, if our public works director would like to weigh in on this I believe he would just one additional uh, comment commissioners, is that you, you could uh, associate it with the construction of these small houses debris generated by the construction of those hall, uh, small homes also needs to be disposed of because we do run into different materials in boxes and plastic and <coughs> it goes around in the in that process of construction. Sure. Then the end date when we're not working. Work. I think that's a great idea. But then the end date, we couldn't have well, a June 30th. Then we would, we would, we would do five. We would add a fifth condition. Okay. We would do a fifth yeah. condition. Okay. And, and I think that's important to do that. I, a, I, I like that we're kind of defining what debris we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. I think that would be easier. To yeah. From no, I Thank agree. You. So Thank we could you. do Good a fifth point. condition that debris associated with construction of the buildings for sale shall be um, appropriately managed and disposed of. Disposed yes, of properly. appropriately stored and disposed right of. Yes. Something like that. You bet. Okay. Yep, we can absolutely add that. And then how are you going to change the wording on number four? I will, um, this is how it'll read. The trailer home and stages of teardown shall be completely removed, including all blowing debris from the property and properly disposed of by June 30th, 2019. Perfect. It's good with me. Okay. And for the record, could you read that number five again? Yep, I'm writing please? it right all now. Right. Okay, so shall be should I refer to the solid waste ordinance as far as for the um, standard for storage? But that really that's probably construction waste more, isn't it? Okay. So here's here here here's my crack at it. <laughs> Debris from construction of the structures shall be uh, uh, managed. Yeah, I, I, yeah, managed in a way. I'm, I'm just thinking. Yeah. So you don't, you're not keeping it from blowing. So you're keeping it from blowing. So, um, debris from construction of structures shall be managed in a way that prevents. 
the Going? spread or, or the, the, yeah. the, the additional thick. <laughs> Yeah. That um, prevents the debris from blowing around. Manage is managed in a way to provide containment till disposal. Yeah. Oh, good grief. Are you sure you're not an attorney? <laughs> Where did you? Which one of them? <laughs> debris the Mitchell Collins. Shall be stored. Stored and contained and properly disposed. Yeah. That's very good. Great yeah. minds just get together here. Does that sound okay? Yes, what? thank you. All right, it sounds good. I don't know if we want to interpret that one. All right, let's read it one more time for the record, what we have. Okay. Okay. Debris from construction of the structures shall be stored and contained until properly disposed. Stored and contained to prevent... Blowing and accumulation. I don't know. Yeah. Do we want to Absolutely say anything not. more than Why that? Why not? <laughs> Period. If it's, contain if it's contained, you don't yeah. need the blowing in that. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Does that sound that okay? It sure sounded great to me. Sounds good oh, to good. me. <laughs> that was hard. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have a first and a second. Mm -hmm. With mm -hmm. the four, but now let's add the additional fifth one, and, and Mr. Wilson has it. No, oh. no, I was just going to say, we have to change our motion. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yep. So we have a motion and a second with the four conditions. Now we're adding a fifth, so you, would you like to amend I your would, motion? I would amend that motion to include the fifth condition. Okay, and also the second, and the second on amendments from Mike Wilson. All right, any more discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one is to consider the conditional use permit request for Otremba Farm. This is to establish a tier three swine and dairy feedlot. This was recommended for approval by the Planning <coughs> Commission with seven conditions. Um, the abide by local and state law, notify a road authority when hauling manure during road restrictions, abide by the good neighbor stormwater and feedlot order minimization plans. Plan to maintain a 50-foot wide grass buffer around the perimeter of the barn. The feedlot owner shall notify the feedlot officer of manure cleanout. The feedlot owner shall notify owners of the fields receiving transfer manure of areas unacceptable for manure stockpiling. And prior to stocking the new swine barn, the open swine lot shall be abandoned. Gentlemen, I'll ask for a motion and a second. So moved. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Any more discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you. Next is to consider the conditional use permit request for Martin Moran, Mor Moran mm -hmm. to establish a tier three swine beef feedlot. This was also recommended for approval by the Planning Commission um, with six conditions. Um, the first five are the same as what you usually hear. And then the sixth is the feedlot owner shall notify owners of fields receiving transpreneur of areas unacceptable for manure. Gentlemen, I need a motion and a second. I'll make that motion. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Any more discussion? Not those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you. Um, I'd like to, Blaine was the I second. Just, I'd just like to make a comment. I want to commend the, the board that night for going through those five. Yeah, I that thought was a, they, that was I a thought very they done a wonderful schedule. job on. Uh, they did. They had they had a lot of them to go through. They were direct to the point. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to commend them for the job they did because I thought they did a very good job. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Blaine, I have a question for Amy uh, on uh, th the cost for interim use permit is five hundred. Is five hundred dollars the cost for a, for an interim use permit after the fact is. It's 500 and then there's the $250 late fee. Okay, very good, thank you. Any more on these, any of these? All right, Amy, I see you got something else. Yes, now I have, um, <clears throat> in your packet you received a list of uh, an abstract of abatements for property tax. These are actual, actually these are for increases uh, due to some um, corrections that were made um, after after the fact. Yeah, after the fact. So I've got two of those, Crowing Power and Eric Martin Sloan. Gentlemen, I'll ask for a motion and a second. So moved. I second. got a motion, I got a second. Any more discussion on those two? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you, that's all I have for you. All right, Amy, thank Amy, you. Amy, thank you. Thank you, Amy. Yes. And looks like next is gonna be Chelsea, auditor. Yeah, 
Good morning, Chelsea. Good morning, hey, Chelsea. Yeah. Let's fill her up with the green. It's a little bit Chelsea. so don't spill it. <coughs> what do you have for us this morning, Chelsea? I've got a few things for you today. The first on the agenda, I'm looking for an approval to approve all of the bank accounts that we have here in the county listed. Um, you see these Looks quarterly. Like about 20, 24 of them there, huh? So moved. Roughly. I got a motion. I need a second. Second. Any more discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Jensky. Chelsea, can you kind of explain to me what we're doing here? Because I don't know that we've ever done this before, and maybe we have, but I forgot. Sure. So if you can explain so, that. Um, I'm coming to get approval for all of the checking and savings accounts that we have in the county. Um, by state auditors, they recommend that any new checking or savings accounts okay. that we open within the year goes to the board to get approved. Um, like we talked about in the planning session, how the jail had the new account and they came to board to get that approved. Yep. Um, just so it's on the radar. So that is why I'm coming to board today is to get approval because I don't know in the past if everything has been approved, so we have a clean slate going forward. And then, Mr. Chair, if I may, is this something that would be done annually? Or I'm just, and I'm just asking. I, I don't believe that would be necessary. Okay. Okay. Um, this is just a starting clean slate and then moving forward. Any new accounts that I would open, checking saving, savings or any other department, I would have them come to board to get approval. Perfect. Any more discussion? Mr. Chair, maybe if one would close, we'd get a new list or something, or we'd identify if one closes so we have a current running yeah, of that's that. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Any change of accounts? Yeah. Very there you good. Go. Thank you very much. This is All right. very I, informative. I, I have a I motion and a second. Any more discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Chair, I'd like to say, though, I'd like to see how we're using a lot of the banks in the area mm -hmm. to do certain whatever it is with. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next, I have um, a request looking for approval for the Department of Motor Vehicle ACH process that we spoke about at the planning session. Gentlemen, I need a motion and a second. So, I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Any more discussion? Mr. Chair, we might as well ask what ACH means. Automatic Clearing House. Very good. All right, any more discussion? Not those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And Mr. Chair, I just want to um, compliment Chelsea and Denise on, on really trying to work through motor vehicle processes to try to assist customers better. I think we all know um, whether we're working in the building or, or needing the, the service and standing in line that process has changed. Business has changed with motor vehicle due to the changes at the state. And so being creative, being innovative again, you know, one of our goals as an organization and trying to figure out how to best serve people is important. And so different um, processes or tactics deployed is huge. And so I appreciate looking into that. I appreciate looking at how we can work with dealers to help streamline that process, but really not forget about the customer standing in line and that be the number one priority. And so all of it combined is, is something that we need to continue to look at. And Chelsea and Denise are doing a great job trying to figure out how best to do that. So thank you. Thank you. All right, moving along. All right, next I have an exempt permit. I'm looking for approval for the application that was submitted. Um, of the Hillman Area Whitetail Management Association to hold a raffle on December 7th of this year at the Brothers Porcupine Barn. Motion and a second. I have a motion. I need a second. second. And a second. Any more discussion? Not those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Next on the agenda, I have a request looking to approve the annual precious metal dealer license. Application for Goldsmith, Jewelers, Melgrams, and Like New Gun and Pawn to conduct business until May 31st, 2020. So moved. Second. That was between Blaine. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then last but not least, I would like approval for paying the bills. Motion the to pay all the bills and every bill there is. This will be a roll call. So moved, Mr. Chair. a motion. I need a second. Second. All right. Those in, uh, Commissioner Zelensky. Aye. Commissioner Blaine. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Lemire. Aye. Myself, aye. Motion carried. That's all I have. Thanks, Thank you. Chelsea. Thank you, Chelsea. Thanks, Chelsea. Have a great day. You too. Steve, Public Works. An update. All right. Look at that. Moving right along. We don't even need to take a break. Barely. We're getting there. Good morning. 
Good morning, Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Got some hard copy info for you. Okay. Good. I see, I see they're starting just north of me up there on one uh, today. Yeah. Well, awesome. One more. Oh, fast enough. He can do one for himself. What do you have for us this morning, Steve? Just an update, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, on the activities of the department here in terms of construction. Uh, the listing of projects, uh, this is the, the single white page. Uh, is all the projects that we have currently under contract that we will be trying to complete by the end of the construction season this year. So we have 19 uh, projects that are under contract that we're using construction money for instead of, and that's differentiated for, we have contracts that we use maintenance money for, but those are not a part of this listing. So I just wanted to go through, we have held all of our pre-construction conferences with the contractors that will be doing this work. Um, project number one, we, we just listed them sequentially, uh, is uh, the contract under Anderson Brothers on number one. The work that, that Commissioner Blaine was referring to today, we have a couple of culvert uh, tapers that we are doing as a, as a maintenance action. That's the work that's taking place right now. Um, the the uh, milling and the paving that will take place out on one is under Anderson Brothers and that'll be starting um, in August, early part of August is what hit their tentative start date uh, that's been given us is, is established at. Uh, number eight, we have two projects that are under contract, one under Knife River, that would be project two there. Uh, it's a thin overlay of number eight. That is under Knife River's contract. And we're anticipating uh, towards the end of next week is when that work on that uh, road segment will uh, take place. Also under, uh, on number eight is a contract that we have with uh, Marvin Treader Incorporated where we're going to be replacing culverts and culvert tapers will be uh, uh, going in sometime in September, early part of September when that will begin. We'd expect that it'll take about the month of September to complete. Number 11 is a, or number, project number four is on our CASA 11. That is under the Anderson Brothers contract. We'll be, uh, we'll be mill, milling off uh, the top pavement and then we'll re be reclaiming it and then paving it back. Uh, July 22nd was a start date that we're looking at for that work. Project number five is on our county state 833. That is under the Knife River uh, contract where we're going to be, we will be milling the north four miles of 33. That CF, CSFD is cement stabilized full depth reclamation where we have weak, weak uh, subgrades. We stabilize the base in order to get additional strength for uh, capacity for heavy loads. What will happen is we'll grind, we're going to mill off about an inch and a half. Well, we'll mill off an inch and a half. We'll come through and what pavement is left is ground up into the gravel base. Then we'll come back through and there's about 4% of cement that is injected into that top, uh, top lift that was ground up the first time. It's uh, compacted heavily and then let, let to, and watered and left to, to set up. And then we'll come back and pave over it. Um, it's surprising that a relatively small percentage of cement in there, how uh, much strength it gives to the, to the road itself. Okay. So that, that uh, is under <coughs> Knife Rivers. It's, uh, they've milled off the, the uh, surface already. Um, we'll be following up next week sometime towards the end of next week where the reclamation will start to take place. Project six and seven are both uh, treader contracts which haven't begun. They're gonna be sometime later in uh, August, we expect, towards the end of August, where they're large pipe replacements. They qualify as bridges, so they show up as bridges. 
um, because of their size, but they're actually large culvert pipe is what the installation is. Project eight is on our CASA 39. That's taking place right now. It's about 50% complete. It's under Knife River's contract. Uh, we are paving 15.2 miles from piers to our maintenance line with Mille Lacs County. Good question on that. Uh, when you say mill, that doesn't mean mill the whole road then. All when the we say mill, it's, it's essentially taking an inch and a half of the bituminous pavement off. But you didn't do that on all of 39. Right. It does. Uh, well, what what's that that mill that is showing in there? Uh, there's some milling in town along the edge of the uh, the edge of the the Perfect. curb and gutter. Yep. Thirty nine was not milled. Okay. But when I say mill on thirty three, we did mill the entire right. surface off of that. I guess I thought mill. I thought thirty nine was going to be milled all the way, but it's not. No. Okay. No. Okay. So, so to for for definition uh, sake here too. So when you you list on here uh, tight pave, can you tell us wh exactly what that means? Um, on on. Um, 39, there's, there's several different types of construction because of the length of it. From 33 to the Mille Lacs County line is an older segment that hadn't been regraded and built to standards, and so how we're handling that segment is different. We're milling the entire surface off of that, that piece from 33 going to Mille Lacs County. Okay. What we do after, and what that does is it opens the cracks up. Typically, the way a crack actually forms is the crack at the surface is the least of it, and it, it down it at like a pyramid. And so we'll take the surface off, open the crack up, and that tight paving is a, is a sand mix, a very fine mix with a lot of oil in it. And then it, it's, it's placed with a paver, and then it is hit very hard with rubber tire roller to get it down into those cracks the very best that we can, and then we surface over it so the crack doesn't show up on the surface for a longer period of time. Mr. Chair, Steve, could you tell me one more time who's do, who has that contract? The 39 uh, project is under Knife River's Thank contract. <clears throat> Number nine is our County State 8 Highway 41, and that also is under Knife River's uh, contract. Uh, that was a, t a tight pave. We milled it, tight paved it, and overlaid, and that is 80% uh, complete. Uh, the paving is all done, so we have shouldering and driveways and that type of thing left to do there. 217 and 218 is in Commissioner Blaine's district. Those are under Anderson Brothers contract, and those uh, are thin overlays. That There isn't any milling or anything that takes place. We're just trying to get ride back into it. Um, it's a very ch cheap, type of construction, the cheapest type of construction that we have to get some additional life out of the pavements, and that's going to be starting it towards the middle of August. Now, Project 12 is our County Road 239 in which we uh, collaborated with Piers Township, um, took over a very high volume township road as a county on our, onto our county system. There's two projects included there. One was the grading from last year and the initial pavement. Um, and then this year under the Anderson, or under the Knife River contract is the final wear and the shouldering. We have, uh, we're about 80% completed showing we do have the final lift of pavement to go down on that piece of roadway and then, um, and then there will be some additional shouldering and then that will be complete. Project, oh, Project 13 is County Road 251, which runs in front of our peers uh, shop. We are going to, uh, we're gonna reclaim that and then resurface over the top of it. So it's gonna run from Trunk Highway 25 to about uh, just a little less than three quarters of a mile. That is under Knife River's contract. And so towards the end of next week is when the recl reclaiming work will take place and follow right behind it with paving. <clears throat> 14 and 15 are, are combined. That is our joint effort with Little Falls Township and the city of Little Falls. Um, 
there is a segment from the bridge to the east to the to our road that goes into the airport. We're going to be milling the surface off of that. There's some old bituminous curb, curb and gutter that we're going to remove and replace with cement concrete curb and gutter uh, and then pave that back. And then we have begun the reconstruction from the airport road to the east to County Road 256, so one mile in length. The contractor's uh, taken all the, all the wood and trees down and has that grubbed out. The stumps are all grubbed out, leaving that to dry out some before uh, much of it will be burnt in, on site. Um, also then our erosion control efforts are all uh, going into place at, at this time too. It'll probably be, it's gonna be early July before the, the grading contractor moves in and start to move the dirt and all the culverts and approaches and all that type of activity takes place. Steve, if I may, when's the estimated completion on that? Do you have any idea? Um, we're gonna be starting here in, it looks like. in early July. I think we have 30 working days on that. So usually uh, you get 20 working days out of a month. So it's probably gonna be uh, we'll, sometime middle of August is what is scheduled to be for completion. And who's got that one, Steve? Is that Knife River also? That's Knife Seven. River that has that, yes. <clears throat> then uh, a carryover from last year is the Agate Trail project in which uh, we, it's a, a township bridge replacement. Because of the uh, water conditions, we weren't able to get that completed last year. That's under Marvin Treader Incorporated. Um, and we're anticipating startup as long as things stay dry here uh, next week. And if you may, I think you missed 16, Steve, did you not? You didn't explain that oh, one? I'm sorry, yes I did. Yeah, Project 16 is uh, again uh, a joint effort that we have with Buckman Township and also with Benton County in which Benton County was reconstructing uh, about five miles of their County Road 78 high volume piece of township road then that tied that 78 into Morrison County that we entered into an agreement with them and have taken that over. Um, Benton County is leading that project and they have begun down on their, on their um, segment on the south end, the first two miles where they're clearing and grubbing and preparing it for um, grading. Marvin Treader Incorporated has that work. Our work up on our end is gonna to be towards the end, so I expect it's probably gonna be in September before they're up into Morrison County with it. Then we have two, the, then Agate was the, the next one, then we have two highway safety improvement projects, uh, ground in edge line and, and our sinusoidal uh, edge stripes, which has been completed. And then we also have ground in pavement messages and stop bar that are in, in <coughs> Anticipated to start sometime towards the end of the month. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Lemire. Steve, that's in soil. Is that the, the bump? The yes. Are just, they put in a different spot than they usually were? Well, there's there's some different um, there's some different standards. The one that we've utilized is where we we put them along with the white edge line with the fog line. Um, partly to maintain the integrity of the fog line and plow from plowing. Because is that down? It's the about top a half down? an inch down. It, okay. well, the, the, the total groove depth is about, at the max is about a half an inch. And then is the top down a little bit too to yes. save the white? Yes. Okay. So the, the paint, once it's placed into that sinusoidal groove, is still below the, the surface that would, if it was Perfect. still there. I had a couple complaints on ginger that they're hitting it. They're not used to hitting them. So that's what I told them, but I wanted to make sure that that was correct on that. It's, it's one of the, the most proven effective um, strategies for safety to keep people from, from um, run off the road. Surprising, I, I, I think it takes a little bit of getting used to, but if you, if you look at it, we leave gaps in front of the driveways so you're not hitting it when you go into your mm -hmm. driveways. Um, but if you're hitting it, and they're complaining, there's probably a reason. They, they must be going off the edge. Right. <coughs> it's Perfect. a good complaint. Yeah. yeah. So that, that is the activities that we're going. Uh, it, we got this, it, it started off slow, but uh, with the weather we've had here the last uh, couple of weeks, things are really, really going hard and strong out there. So good. hopefully we get it all done. 
Then I did also wanted to just uh, touch base, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, with our um, federal <laughs> application through the ATP um, for federal funds for fiscal year uh, 2023. Um, earlier in the year, the board authorized us to make application for our County State 8 Highway 1 from Randall to County State 8 Highway 5, right up to Lake Alec. Um, and uh, the, the first sheet that, that I have here um, represents the amount of funding that is targeted for each region in District 3's ATP. ATP stands for the Area Transportation Partnership. And uh, District 3, MnDOT District 3 uh, is represented there. There's 13 counties in MnDOT District 3. Aiken, Aiken caucuses with uh, District 2 up uh, in the Arrowhead area instead of ours. They had a choice because uh, that county was split between two different MnDOT districts and they decided to go, to go with uh, that one. So we have Region 5, of course, in our district that we're familiar with. Uh, Region 7E is uh, the Kennebec, Asante, um, Lax, those, those counties that in that direction. 7W is, uh, is not a, a region, but it is represented by MnDOT and they do receive targeted funding for projects within that area that would be considered 7W. And then the fourth one is the St. Cloud APO. That target, what happens is the federal money that comes for construction to the state of Minnesota is split. The MnDOT takes 75% of those funds, 25% is designated for local projects, and then this targeted percent is the percent that each, uh, in, in MnDOT District 3, uh, that uh, each of those get, and it's based on how much county state aid we receive. So we, they're, they're looking at how state monies are distributed to each of the each of the counties, and for the, uh, the 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 counties that are in the regions, and then they take the federal money and prorate it the same way as that's distributed. So that's how the numbers come out. That three mil in, in 2023, Region Five, our targeted uh, amount was three million sixty nine thousand one hundred dollars, and that's how that was determ determined. And so with the other other regions. Then on on the next page, well, we made application along with every county in Region Five that were listed there. And uh, we were successful and the Area Transportation Partnership just recently approved um, these projects the way they were recommended for funding. And so our CASA one was recommended for funding. It's a little over two million total uh, dollars in, in that project with one, almost 1.6 being federal monies that we'll receive for it. So that was, uh, that, that was a good hit, uh, win for us. We had gotten, uh, again, close to that same amount last year on 4th Street. So, so. so Steve, what happens if we went and got that money? Would we prolong County 1 to do the work, or what would happen? Yeah, we, we, would, uh, we would probably have to stretch out on some on the far end of our, our uh, five-year plan where we use County State Aid money in order to do it and keep it on track. Um, one of the things that this really does for us is it allows us, I think, to keep our road system in the condition that it's in. Otherwise, I think we, and, and we're struggling, I think, on some of them. Some of them, if you, you get out in, in, in uh, some of the rural, more rural areas of our county, where um, we're struggling to keep a good ride in them. We're struggling to keep them from potholing and, and uh, breaking up. Um, so without this kind of funding, I think that would be a lot worse than what we're experiencing. Good point. All right, thanks. Anything else? That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Anything Steve? for Steve at all, gentlemen? I just got a question, Steve. When we're talking Region 5 here, this is the region of transportation throughout the state. This has nothing to do with Region 5. No, it does. Yeah, it does? It is Region 5. Okay, it is Region that 5. That is your region, which is Cass. Crow Wing, Morrison, Todd, and Medina. Yep. And the dollars are funneled through Region 5 Development Commission. If we yes. were not a part of that organization, this would not come to us and okay. Okay. be that's what I want. Yep. And the Transportation Council is a, is a regional appointed yes. uh, committee that, that 
for Region 5 determines these projects. They make recommendations to the ATP. Yeah. Okay. So Sounds it's very good. important to the business we do. Sounds good. Thank you. And if I may, Steve, the meeting is at Landfill, right, Friday? Yes. Yeah. I, I was going to ask, thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, I think the July meeting is the fourth is on Thursday. It would be on the fifth. Would you <laughs> want to uh, reload or we could cancel it? We could cancel it for July, or we could reload, redo that. It's up to you, gentlemen. What do you think, Steve? Do we? Are we I, I would it? like to see if we could hold it sometime. I have some things that I'd like to talk with you about. Okay. What do you got for date for July? Then? What are you thinking? About the nineteenth. Is that to work? That would be good if it works we, for you guys. We got we'll make it work for the next month. Yeah, yeah then we'd we, have one right away. We got August 2nd, we have this plan for them. The August 2nd one would be a T-SWAC, where the 19th would be a public work. What about like the 12th, that week before? You, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not around, not the around the 12th. Yeah. So we have a T-SWAC. I mean, this is the way it would have been scheduled. We would have a T-SWAC in June and in July. Excuse me, in August. August too. Yes. Yeah. So... All right, gentlemen, let's see if we can find a day here for Steve. All right, so July. And does it have to be a Friday? Sometimes Mondays work with you guys in schedules. But Just so you know, Steve, our schedules all say public works on the second from an invite, and then it, it goes from there. T Schwack, public works, T Schwack. Well, Jeff, yeah, there was public works in July. I'm talking August 2nd. It says public works, and all of ours probably says public works. It's from an invitation. Mm -hmm. Oh, we might need to adjust that, that if it was was wrong. I think we we didn't schedule July. one in I July like because we typically don't that first week. So oh. I think we assumed and then went that way. I got so we'll fix that. Invitations oh, yeah. from Commissioner I'm Wilson seeing. last week about Lake <laughs> Shannon. Huh? Did you? Yeah, they were just popping up. But anyway, so this would be for public works in Ju in uh, July. You're talking? Yes. Okay, so. How about, like, are we trying to avoid the week of the 4th of July? Well, the, the or week? How about yeah, the, how about the first? Are how we good the on the first? The first, the, first. the first is a Monday. First or the third? I won't be there, but I don't know that it matters, Steve. Does it matter? I mean, do you usually take the week off, too? I guess maybe we're trying to avoid that week, are we not? Or are the 8th? Here? I was we thinking uh, maybe you guys would like a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 8th? If, the eighth? If it's how about okay, the 8th? How about the 8th is a Monday? The 8th would be good with me. Well, Works yeah. for me. Okay, that'll work. All right, so 8.30 Public Works, correct? Are we yes. Public Works or Chief Swag? 8.30 Public, public works. works. Public Works. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Enjoy the week. You too. All right, right now, and just so. as long as your schedule is there, remember that come the department head meetings the next two months are ones that I would hope that you guys can attend. And so I'm hoping that you can be there, if possible, on June 12th. We're talking about our county website, and I've got some different ideas when it comes to deploying like that and some resources for it. And then July 10th is our management meeting, if you recall. So June 10th or June 12th, to June 12th and is July 10th. You've been notified of all these, but I just yeah, want to yeah, remind yeah. you as, as dates July and as they're coming up. Hey, Commissioner Wilson, you just sent me a one on public works. Thank you. I don't know why, don't know why that's June happening. June 12th. June 12th is the department head, yep. and then July 10th is it's department It's the management head. meeting oh. for all, but you're, it's on the same day. Yeah, Just for the sake sure. of argument, mm -hmm. if anybody cares, I will not be at that department head meeting. I've got a chair on meeting. In, on the 12th? Yeah, I've got a chair meeting in St. Cloud. Okay. So. Sounds good. Okay. I can get you the information on what we're talking and about. I it's regarding the website. Website, and I mm -hmm. have every confidence in everyone, so I have no issues okay. with that at all. Just okay. want to make sure you guys have the opportunity to hear the presentation. So moving forward, Deb, what do you have for us? Um, well, this is the last day we're in Little Falls City Hall here for a meeting. And so um, I just went over and thank you. We signed a card and got them a little treat for being so gracious in hosting us and, and their hospitality for the city. So I can't thank them enough. It certainly has allowed for this time period, which has been quite a long time since last, since fall of 2017, we've been over here. So um, it's worked out great to be able to have that um, space, to have this space, to be able to utilize it. Um, anxious to get back home in the county and, and the space is really beautiful. We have the open house scheduled for June 18th. And so I did give you some invitations. We are going to send them out to all the different government agencies within the county. So your townships and your cities um, and our partners that we have 
have um, from 8 to 9.15. We'll run the open house. We'll have some refreshments and be able to just visit and kind of um, – relax a little bit and enjoy the space that we've worked so hard to get to knowing we have three more phases yet to continue and so um it's nice to be able to just kind of congregate and, and recognize the effort put in and then recognize what we're going to continue to put forward yeah, um, you brought up a photo for commissioners you yep. want to make sure that you know we're at our best as far as our dress code goes Is yes there a date for that? we're going to do that on june 18th, june 18th. and so okay um that day, maybe, maybe uh, I don't know. What do you guys want to? I've never really had to talk about wardrobe before with you guys. So I, no, that's, no. I just to wanted do, to but... clarify that, that that it wasn't before that or whatever. So. Nope, it's that day, okay. and so we can talk a little bit about whether or not you, you know, just uh, I would assume a suit coat and a tie, and yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. go from there. Um, but I'd like a picture of each of you individually, all together, one with with me, and then we're going to do admin staff also. So. Um, yeah, it looks nice down there. Admin has moved down, um, and social services is transi transitioning over in the next couple of days. Social services staff is all adjusting and going to be in adjustment for the next few weeks to get used to their temporary locations and their new work environment, but it really does look nice. Um, and so, again, thank you for the investments you've made and the vision that you've had when it comes to this I project. I want to compliment you on, on the photo thing. I think I did this before, but I'll do it again and I'll continue. I've seen other counties where they've actually got photographs of the boards, mm -hmm. and that's just a huge piece to the puzzle as far as I'm concerned. So thank you for that. Are we having the plan here? Nope. Na we are done. After the, this, okay, yes, we are going to have a trial run next Tuesday, okay, the 11th. And a part of the agenda is to talk a little bit about the technology in the new boardroom and about um, what is being, what is currently being installed. I think they're there today and tomorrow. Um, the work that they've done, what it's intended to do, how it's used, things like that. I just want to help Tyler out so he knows where we're going to be yes. at. Um, and, and also, Tabitha was saying too, and I think it's important to note, all of, when, when she put out the calendar items it refers to city a little fall so we want to change that so it's in the right location but just know you're gonna get that clump of emails again to adjust it and so um, just recognize that that's going to come out which might mean that then Mike's the email is gonna double it up I don't know we got to figure that out I tell you I don't know what the deal is no, it's fine. but I just know that way it's a one-time thing I know it's I know it's kind of a pain but it, that way then at least everybody's in the right location and we have that correct moving forward we'll so. have a special spot in our new home for our good friend Tyler we have a special spot for Tyler absolutely and Mark too, our other good friend so yes um, we'll we'll figure that out make sure you're all set up Tyler Oh, yes, I'm excited. I, it looks nice. I'm anxious. Um, and we'll use next week to get the kinks out, and then we'll start with our first board meeting on the 18th. So, Anything else for that? Um, I have a resolution to close the tail end of the meeting here, but if we could go through schedules first, that would be great. All right. Does anybody like a bathroom break before we go for yeah. schedule? No, let's just before we schedules and then let's... Then we'll, okay. All right. How about let's start with Commissioner Blaine. What dates are we talking about? Yeah. June 9th okay. through the 27th. Yeah. June 9th through the 22nd. All right. I'll crank it up here. So, so on the 11th, we will have a planning session at the courthouse. <clears throat> And on the 12th, we will have a department head meeting in meeting room one, is what I have. Yes. Um, no. The following week, um, the Tuesday after Father's Day, we will have our first board meeting, and we'll be dressed in fantastic attire for um, that that uh, open house to the public and our first uh, board meeting in the courthouse. And other than that, Mr. Chair, I don't have anything on my on my schedule. All right. I hope that's right. I would there's there's, there's, there's a couple so things you're missing, but I'm sure the other board members will bring them up. Okay. All right. How about Commissioner Wilson? <clears throat> well, I've got a township meeting on uh, the 11th. That's the one with Amy. And oh. we're going through. Um, Where is that and what time? What township and what township? I don't know which township it is. I got to look at that other schedule. It's the 730. It'll be one of the five that I've got. I've got that on the 17th also township with Amy. 
Oh, that one was Lakin. On, on the 11th is Lakin Township. Hey, could you give the, okay, so again, the, the 11th, you didn't know what township it, it is. That's Lakin Township. Oh, it's Lincoln? Lakin? Yep. Lakin. And Lakin. And the 17th, there's another one at 730. I've got 815 at Pulaski. Pulaski Township. And then I got community development yeah. at 1215 <laughs> exactly. on the 18th. What's on the 18th? <laughs> community <laughs> development. I'm sorry. And then on the 22nd, I have Lake Shamina. Do we have something going on in Lake Shamina on the 22nd? Fish Trap has a lit annual meeting on that day. Fish Trap. Yeah, that's just their. Yeah. That's just Fish Trap's lit. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's just their lit one. Okay. I mean, we can go to nope, it if you want. can, but. I had Lake Shamina on here, so. Oh, Shamina? No. Okay, sounds okay. good. That's it. All right. Commissioner Lemire. On the 10th, uh, Yellow Ribbon at 5.30, Cabin Fever. And then there's that AMC conference at 8 o'clock a.m. in Mora. Canabec County. Canabec yeah. County. That's on the 10th. That's yeah. on the 10th at 8 o'clock in Canabec County. At the jail, I think, right? Meeting, 14th, meeting the, uh, 14th, there's a meeting with Congressman Stauber at 1 o'clock in the IT department. I'm sorry, I missed that one. There's a meeting with Congressman Stauber in the, um, the 14th at 1 o'clock p.m. And where? June 14th? Where June 14th in the IT department. It IT, IT training room is what, I think. IT Stauber. 18th, 8 o'clock, open house. Board meeting, 9. Board of Equalization, I have. Yep. 5 o'clock PM. Yep. 5 o'clock, Board of Equalization on Tuesday. The 18th. Yep. 19th, small group training. And that's all I got. All right, Commissioner Jelinski. And then on the 11th at 12 o'clock, I've got a towards zero death meeting at Public Health. On the 12th, I've got an emergency services board executive committee meeting followed by the full board. On the 13th, there's a trails meeting at the Randall Fire Department. I'm supposed to give you the time, just the date. Um, I know them. Okay. I got them. On From the 14th, calendar. there's an armor rack meeting in Alexandria. We just said Stauber. Mm -hmm. uh, on the 19th at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, there's a Hands of Hope meeting in Todd County. On the 20th, or excuse me, we just go to the, no. Yeah, we go, go on to the 22nd. Go to the 22nd. 22nd. Yeah. At the 20th, <coughs> I've got an Armor Owners and Operators meeting, Douglas County in Alexandria. 7.30 that evening, I've got an Egg Society meeting at the Fairgrounds, and the 21st at 10 o'clock in the morning, there's a land sale meeting in the boardroom. Yep. Land sale the land sale, the that's at 10 o'clock. When, when is that the again? Board, 10 o'clock in the morning on the 21st okay. of June. So and then room, as what? one of the commissioners alluded to at 9 o'clock in the morning, on the 22nd is Fish Trap Lake is having their LID annual meeting. I don't know that I'm going to that, but they're having it that day. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Did you have a township meeting that you mentioned on the 10th? Me? Yeah. I don't know that I have a township meeting on that day, but oh, I, I bet I do. I see it on your calendar. <laughs> I don't think that's with Amy, though. It's either Bell Prairie or Platt. Probably. Well, it could be Bell Prairie. Uh, I'll... I'll think on that. I'll get it to you. Okay. Is that land sale at 10 o'clock? And then... Yeah. 10 a.m. Yes, it's 10. All right, gentlemen, are we good Get there? You got me out. covered. Do you have TCC? That's... No, that's... Uh, do Canada? I have, that's the 10th is in Bell Prairie. What is TCC? Do I have TCC? I don't have TCC written down. I think that's going to be the 27th because they moved it back. But let's see, yeah, TCC on Thursday, the 20th, 5 p.m. And you don't have great like this month. 
<laughs> now that one I know. So the only ones that that's going to be the week after were the Stauber and the and Board. That'll be the 24th. That'll be on the 25th. Yeah. And then more out, right? That's in more out. Yeah, I seen that. Airport Commission on the 20th. Uh, okay, yes. Actually, it, it probably not, not but yeah. yes. Put it down. What did you say? No meeting for great weather. That's right. We canceled mm -hmm. it, so there's mm -hmm. no meeting. Mm -hmm. We're in board meeting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the 21st, that's we don't have any land. I don't have any land, so yeah, I won't so be there, but. That more than Tadwadina Community Health Board, that one. Mm -hmm. What's that? The more than Tadwadina Community Health Board? Is, is uh, tomorrow. Okay, not the 12th. Okay, sure. Scott. Anything else, gentlemen, that we're missing, Tabitha? You'll, Did, you'll, you'll auto these onto the calendar? The ones that you're missing? Yep, I can yeah. on there. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. You're awesome. The calendar just filled up. And then, no, we're going to send those updates about <laughs> moving to the... So the just keep clicking, website. delete Mike Wilson's and approve the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> and one more time, just for clarification, the Congressman Stauber one is in the IT... That who, one who set that up here? I, have no, I think, no, I think that uh, I, I think that's. I was going to ask about that. If 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 you didn't know anything about that, then this is a meeting that I set up for for uh, Steve Bukowski. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I don't know that. Okay, so that this has to do. I was surprised that why we're meeting there and not at the public, at works. public works, and I'm surprised he didn't say anything about it, but. Can that would be the, that would be I the I that that something else. Yeah, yeah, that would be the only, he had asked, Steve had asked me. It's about contact. opioids. What? It's about I opioids. Know, I don't that, yeah, I don't, How about before we get deep, let's let Dan yeah, dig into it. And yeah, then show. it's then then maybe. How's that song? Well, then Steve, maybe he's the, maybe he's right already here. talked to Steve it says about. Okay, okay, as of right now, I don't have Stabber on my calendar. So yeah, so I'm not going to put it on mine either. The, just so. a minute, he's reading the email. From says me. he wants to invite you to our opioid event with Doctors Devine and Bell, Investigator McDonald and Sheriff Larson. This event will be inf informational for Pete to learn the details on how to combat the opioid cross crisis based off how Little Falls has been successful in their response. The 14th she's talking, is Friday at 1 o'clock, right? The Mr. IT room. Mr. Chair, right now it's at the IT training room. I'm going to talk to Sheriff Larson and find out exactly who's all coming because we may move it down to meeting room one or the, the board meeting. Let me get some details and we'll get that out to you. How is okay. that? Yep. Yeah, I'm going to cross it off that my list one until I get the exact. All right, anything else on the... Okay, let's should we let's take the bathroom break and um, then actually we'll if we I could get the resolution first um, oh, We have okay. a resolution for a closed executive session um, Brian is here to talk with the board about um, Kevin and Patricia Patricia Casella and the complaint that was filed in district court demanding judgment determining that they are the owners of in fee and in possession of certain real property located in Morrison County This was an issue that's coming back from discussion that we had quite some time ago um, about it, but I'd like that resolution um, considered. For Let's make a motion. motion to approve the resolution. We have a motion. I need a second. Second. I got a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, we'll close the meeting if we want to take a little break. We'll while close the meeting around. first and then we'll take a break. So I, we're closing the meeting at 1039. 1039.